One Monday morning in October, Todd is driving to work. I'm a little more stressed because of my job. At times, um, running multiple projects, I decided to go hit a job site that, that I had to go check on. But as Todd drives along, he's hit by an uncomfortable sensation. I started feeling this pain. My chest felt tight, and so maybe it was heartburn. You know, maybe it's just being too stressed out. Nah, who, who likes Mondays? Nobody likes Mondays. When Todd arrives at his job site, he heads inside to look for his crew. It's actually a four-story building, and uh, walking the stairs is when I noticed that, you know, I'm starting to get out of breath. And my chest just started getting tighter and tighter. Todd returns to his car and calls his wife, Lisa, for advice. So I answered the phone, and Todd sounded a little funny. He's like, oh, I've been having these chest pains. I said, well, go get it checked out. When Todd arrives at the nearest urgent care center, he tells the staff he's having chest pains and is seen right away. She checks my blood pressure, and that's when she says, oh, your blood pressure's kind of high here. Todd has a history of high blood pressure and normally takes a prescription medication. That's when I started really thinking about, well, I haven't ta been taking my blood pressure medicine uh, for the past five or six days. The doctor suggests this is likely the cause of Todd's symptoms. But to be sure, she runs some additional tests. They did an EKG, they did a chest x-ray, and uh, everything came back normal. I was thinking, well, that's it. So I just need to get back on my blood pressure medicine. Over the next few weeks, Todd remembers to take his medication. The chest pain started to subside, went away. Then one morning, three weeks later, he's in the bathroom getting ready for work. So I was taking a shower. I was really needing to clear my chest. And as I was clearing my chest, and all of a sudden I coughed up and there was blood. But mostly it's phlegm. At that point, I was just like, it's getting colder. It's winter time. You know, the air is dry, and maybe it's just sinuses. But by the next night, Lisa notices that the congestion in Todd's chest has gotten worse. You know, his breathing was just kind of labored. <clears throat> yeah. So that's scary. That's a scary sound. Maybe I'm just getting a chest cold. That's, that's kind of just what I thought. For weeks, Todd tries to shake off his symptoms. But his congested cough lingers. A couple weeks later, I was uh, walking a new job site. And in the middle of this conversation with my carpenter, I, I, I felt like I had to clear my throat. But as he does so, Todd gets a nasty shock. So I was not only coughing up blood, it was more blood than phlegm. It was a lot more blood this time. If you can imagine what tapioca pudding looks like, except for red. It had these, these little bubbles in it, and it was just disgusting. It was gross. The next day, Todd makes an appointment with his primary care physician. He recommended doing tests for a TB and a chest x-ray. Everything came back negative. With no evidence to suggest anything more serious, the doctor suspects Todd is suffering from sinusitis. Sinusitis is a condition in which the cavities around the nasal passage become inflamed. The swelling causes difficulty breathing, and in severe cases, bleeding. The doctor prescribes Todd a seven-day course of antibiotics. After seven days of taking them, nothing changed. And by now, Todd's wife, Lisa, is getting worried. So I told him he needed to go back, and they need to figure something else out. This isn't getting any better. At Lisa's insistence, Todd contacts his primary care physician and is referred to a pulmonologist. He said, coughing up blood. You've already had a chest x-ray. We're going to do a CT scan. Following the tests, the specialist reviews the results with Todd. And he walks in the room, and I could tell, look on his face, that it wasn't, wasn't good. He said, your CT scan, I've noticed a mass in your lung. I was very scared. Right off the bat, I just thought the worst. 
I thought I had cancer, you know. I remember just thinking, man, why? You know, I mean, I've never smoked. Why is this happening to me? At this point, Todd's case is handed to thoracic surgeon, Dr. Melanie Edwards. Todd's symptoms could have indicated tuberculosis, but he tested negative. So we were worried about a possible cancer. The only way Dr. Edwards can be sure the mass is cancerous is to remove it. But the surgery comes with risks. The lung would have to be deflated. There would be a risk of the lung collapsing after the operation. There's a risk of bleeding. There's a risk of pneumonia. That night, Todd explains the situation to his wife, Lisa. After all these years, when you hear him talk about dying, it was tough. It was tough. I guess you always think the worst. Beth, that was one of the biggest things, not being there for her. Watching her grow. A few weeks later, Dr. Edwards removes the mass from Todd's lung and immediately sends it to pathology for analysis. It reveals something unexpected. Todd had Paragonimus kelicotti, a parasite also known as the lung fluke. I had not ever heard of that. No idea what that was. Lung fluke is a type of parasitic flatworm which invades the lungs of humans and other animals. Inside Todd's body, lung fluke flatworms are devouring his lung tissue and breeding, leading to his chest pains, bloody sputum, and his lung mass. It was terrifying to realize that I actually had a creature living inside my body. Lung flukes can live in the human body for up to 20 years. They're able to go this long without being detected because the symptoms they trigger develop slowly over a long period of time. But as the lung fluke colonies grow, the parasites can migrate out of the lungs and into the central nervous system, causing bleeding in the brain, seizures, and even death. That means the tapioca-like substance Todd was coughing up in his sputum was in fact the lung fluke's eggs. It's crazy to think of that's why I was coughing off all that blood. I was really creeped out. I was really creeped out. But how did Todd contract lung fluke? The life cycle of the lung fluke begins when an infected mammal passes the fluke's eggs in its saliva or feces. If the eggs land in fresh water, they hatch and then cling to the first of three hosts, the aquatic snail. Inside the snail, the parasite matures before emerging to find its next host, a freshwater crustacean. The life cycle is completed when a third host, a human or animal, eats an infected crustacean raw or undercooked. Paragonimus calicati is common within the Missouri rivers. Testing has shown a pretty high incidence of paragonimus infection in local crayfish. River trips are common activities, and that's why it spreads. 